This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. With the second Sunday of Advent comes the story of that oddball character known as John the Baptist. Now, Gospel writer Matthew describes him as a man who lives in the wilderness, who's dressed in camel's hair, and who eats locusts and wild honey. He's the kind of guy who would give your modern-day reality star from a program such as Survivor a run for their money. People from Jerusalem and all over Judea are flocking to hear his message and to participate in a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Though John the Baptist is a little bit strange in his habits, his message of repentance seems to kind of resonate with the people. He's a cult figure of sorts, going against the grain of the religious leaders of the time, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. While these folks focus on the law and the proper ways of doing things, John has people looking inward at their actions, confessing their wrongdoings, and starting again with a renewed spirit. John's hope is that by these people naming their faults, they will learn to not repeat them again in the future. But we all know how that goes. We're all human after all, and we will continue to falter as we strive to live a life worthy of God's love. John the Baptist's message has some meat to it, and these people are intrigued. They begin to lift him up in status for his extreme way of thinking. But even more so, these people are beginning to think that, you know what? This John the Baptist guy, this might be him. This might be the Messiah. This might be the Savior that we have been longing for for the past 500 years. The people have been patiently waiting, and waiting, and waiting some more. Yet no one has come to redeem the nation of Israel. No one has been anointed the chosen one, the one who will defeat the enemies of the people. Yet this John the Baptist guy, the things he's saying, you know, they are intriguing. He may be a little bit odd and a little bizarre, but his message seems to be pretty good. Maybe this is the Messiah. Maybe John is the one we've been waiting for. To which John replies, Close, but no cigar. What a funny phrase. Close, but no cigar. Did you know that the phrase originates from the 19th century carnivals when cigars were the prizes handed out for winning games. And when you lost at a game and you came up short, the carnival operator would say those deflating words to you, close, but no cigar. In other words, almost, not quite, please try again. The people are flocking to John are ever so close. John is not their savior, but John knows who is. He is aware that the person whom they seek is on his way, that he will be revealed to them shortly. But for John, he knows his role. His role is a role of preparation and proclamation. He is the one who is spoken about in the book of Malachi, Behold, I send my messenger to prepare the way before me. John the Baptist is the voice crying out in the wilderness, informing those willing to listen that the one who is greater than he is on the way. This guy who's coming, yeah, he is so radical, so outlandish, and at the same time, so filled with the love of God that people are going to be absolutely blown away. He will do unimaginable things in his ministry that demonstrate God's grace and mercy to his people. He will walk to the fringes of society to bring the message of good news to all people. John utilizes the words of the prophet Isaiah to announce this Messiah's arrival. He says, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Hope is on the way. John's role is to announce the coming of this new king, 
and to introduce to the world the one that we know as Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. John says that Jesus is coming and that he's going to have a significant impact on all of humanity. He will transform the lives of the people. He will usher in a new era focused on concern for the neighbor and love for God. Ready or not, here he comes. The fact of the matter is, we need Jesus to come to us. We have tried to go about this thing called life on our own, but we keep hearing those haunting words, close, but no cigar. We come up short. We fail to succeed. We falter. We crash. We end up on the short end of the stick. We hear those words, almost, not quite. Please, try again. Because we are left standing at the carnival game of life with nothing to show for the work and effort that we have put in, we then search for that Savior who will bring us that prize which we all seek. We wait in hopeful expectation for the arrival of the one who will bring us wholeness, who will rectify our wrongs, who will grant us a peace in our lives that we cannot come up with ourselves, the one who will bestow upon us a second chance and new life. Nowadays, we have the advantage of looking back on the ministry of Jesus and seeing just what he is all about. We see how the valleys are filled and how the rough ways are made smooth. We are enlightened to the fact that Jesus is in the business of renovations as he takes our hearts and gives them an extreme makeover. We understand that Jesus is that Savior, the source of our salvation. When I think of Jesus making the rough way smooth, my thoughts immediately go to the time when he's sleeping in a boat with his disciples and a great storm just sweeps in across the lake, causing panic and fear amongst those on board. Jesus eases those fears as he commands the waves and the wind to cease. This story is an example of how those with faith will experience a calmness and peace in their lives that they cannot manufacture on their own. We see this as Jesus cures a blind man, heals a leper, forgives an adulterer, feeds a multitude, and promises salvation to a thief hanging beside him on a cross. Jesus focuses his ministry on reaching out to others with a compassion that has not been seen before. He has come to put an end to sin and evil once and for all through his unselfishness and his love. And he wants all who believe to experience this gift firsthand. We need Jesus. We need the things that he provides. By sending his Son to us, we are awakened and enlightened to the fact that God continues to be at work in our world, doing marvelous things. Maybe we don't always see his handiwork. Maybe we have our blinders on and we just don't recognize that he's out there. He's active, present, and with us in our most exciting joys and especially in our deepest sorrows. Jesus is our Savior. Emmanuel, God with us, working for us, standing by us, loving and holding us in his caring and compassionate embrace. The King of Kings is here. Let us prepare the royal highway by letting others know that Jesus' love resides in our hearts. Like John the Baptist, but minus the camel skins and locusts, our role is ever so important as we help introduce to the world the one who is triumphant time and time again. Our victory is found in the victory won by Christ on the cross. Jesus has come for us all. Hope is on the way. Cigars all around. Amen. Remember as you go about your day that yesterday is gone. Tomorrow does not yet belong to you. So why not live today, knowing that you never walk alone? See you all next week. Later.